right here before us tonight is Prophetess Joan Brown. Um, she's a woman who speaks for God by divine inspiration. She's a woman who is a spokesperson of the doctrine of Jesus Christ. She is a woman that is quick to the point and can, can cause a movement in the community at any time. She, she could cause a movement in the nation. She could cause a movement globally. Prophetess Joan Brown, she specializes in evangelism, uh, uh, whether in homes, communities, or, or living uh, as a missionary in the field. Yes, yes, you, you're talking to someone that works in the field. <laughs> she goes for the harvest. She is a, uh, also in her professional career at, at, at Ridges Safe House. She, she's a case manager um, for a, a faith-based nonprofit organization uh, that, is, that is operated by donors and volunteers who believe in the heart and the mission of empowering women uh, through providing for them uh, in desperate times of need. She is well studied. She studied at uh, Southwestern Assemblies of God University and also Lamar University, uh, which serves her well in hospitals and human services agencies as a case manager to ensure that clients' needs are being met. Uh, Prophet mm -hmm. Stone Brown is, is gifted in various backgrounds, such as mental health, nursing, social work, and even vocational rehabilitation. Listen, uh, you're in for a special, special, special time, special treat. But most importantly, if you need deliverance, you can receive it tonight. You can receive your deliverance tonight. I promise you, if you listen to this woman of God and you need deliverance, you will have it tonight. Woman of God, I'm releasing this mic and I'm giving it to you as my phone is on me at this time. Godspeed. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. And Father, so we do. We commit this all to you, Lord God. Let us take away from this teaching, Lord God, those things that we need to understand about our emotions and what emotions can cause for us mentally, physically, and emotionally. We give you glory, Lord God, because revelation comes from you, Lord God. Utterance comes from you, Lord God. And so I take no credit for any of this, Lord God, but I thank you, Lord, that I am just your handmaiden, your vessel to do what you have called and given me to do. In Jesus' mighty name and all of God's people say amen and amen. Well, quickly, just a little bit, it is a privilege uh, just to speak into your lives. We all have something that has challenged us at one point in life or the other. And so in talking about our emotions, emotions is just an, a natural instinctive state of your mind deriving Carolyn. from one's circumstances mood a relationship with others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a feeling. It's a sentiment. And so, beloved, most mental illnesses are caused by imbalances in chemicals and structural changes in your brain. And in the healthcare and mental health component, Psychological and emotional pain and mental pain is what it is called, is an unpleasant feeling, okay? It's an unpleasant feeling. It's a suffering of your psyche, your psychological or non-physical uh, origin, of a non-physical origin. And so in... Talking about this, there have been studies that when we describe our emotions, it's how much you hurt as a human being, okay? When we talk about emotions, we talk about how much I hurt as a human being, as a person. Um, we are challenged uh, mentally 
by day-to-day -day life, okay? And so in our emotions, our emotions can cause us physical, physical and chronic pain in our bodies and as well as in our minds. As I was speaking to a group of people, the, that the mind, the will, and the emotion, which the soul is, is the housing component of your emotions. And so when the devil gets on your playground, <laughs> he plays on your merry-go-round, the merry-go-round of your emotions. And so that is what our emotions do to us. They, they, the enemy goes and he, he tampers with what our perception is, which causes us great pain. Some of us have experienced emotional pain as young as children, okay? Trauma of all manner and of all sorts, whether it's verbal abuse, whether it's physical abuse, we have experienced to some level, to some capacity, emotional pain. And in experiencing that, rejection is one of the main, um, I want to say, demonic henchmen of your emotions. When we are rejected in the womb, beloved, it is difficult to recover from that. When we have been rejected as small, as young as infants, it's difficult for us to gain our capacity as a person and grow past that pain. We don't know what's causing us to feel the way we feel. We don't know how come we are so deeply hurt. But rejection is, is very painful. It has to do with abandonment. Some of us have grown up in, have grown up in, in, in single home, single parent homes. And it has caused us a great deficit in our emotions. Emotional pain often is life than physical pain. Okay? Emotional pain can make it impossible just for you to enjoy life on a day to day basis. And it can manifest as a physical disease, whether it operates through the vehicle of rejection, fear, anxiety. All of these are things that we experience either to a greater degree or some degree. And so with emotional pain, there is a process that we must go through in order to heal the emotions. When we have been traumatized as early as a child, you see, growing up in, 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 in homes, we have that, well, what goes on in my house, it stays in my house. But, beloved, there is hope and there is healing for the hurt. Hurt people hurt other people, and so when you have been damaged or you damage good, whatever age that you have been traumatized, whether it's been sexual abuse, mental abuse, verbal abuse, you are stuck at that age. Some of us have been traumatized as young as the age of anywhere from three to five years old, which is key in your developmental, your brain begins to develop, but in, when there's trauma, then of course it stunts your ability to grow past that trauma. Now you may develop physically, but your emotions, your mental capacity, your mental state is stuck at the age that you have been traumatized at. And so just to talk a little bit about some of the emotional pain that we experience through life and how it affects your body. 
Let's just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I feel a need to take authority over the atmosphere because there seems to be an attack in the spirit realm. Let's begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. We take authority over the atmosphere, over the hemisphere, over the galaxies, over the stratosphere. We pull down whatever the enemy has erected over the airwaves in the name of Jesus. We break the hold of the enemy in the name of Jesus. And we call forth, uh, we call forth angelic, divine assistance in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens be open. Uh, we take authority over the airways. Uh, we snatch out of the hand of the enemy the airways that is operating and opposing this session in the name of Jesus. We hold you bound. We hold you bound. We hold you bound. We hold you bound in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You have no authority here. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Beloved, there was a contention because it was messing with my computer. And so now we are good. In Jesus' name. In healing our emotions and in emotional and psychological pain. As I stated, you, be, you hurt as a human being. It's called mental suffering and mental torment. And that is one thing that the enemy is good at doing. But we want to be able to understand when we have certain things going on in our emotions, our emotions could take a toll. It makes our body make us feel pain in certain spots that we never understood. Well, where is this coming from? Why am I feeling this? What is going on? Well, just think about stress. If you're stressed about something, then there's trauma That's, that triggers Something in your brain, okay? And when the brain begins to fire the dendrites, it begins to send out messages. It sends out messages and it lets you know this thing here is causing me pain. It's just like if you stump your little toe. When you stump your little toe, you... It's not funny, and it doesn't feel good. When you hit your elbow, it doesn't feel good. But, beloved, we have an adversary that is constantly on the job, doing what he does best. But you have been given authority. It says, because these signs shall follow them that believe that in my name they shall cast out devils. And so in your emotions, when the enemy comes in like a flood and attacks your emotion, beloved, you begin to feel depressed. You begin to feel anxious. You begin to feel pain in parts of your body that you didn't even know you had or could even experience pain there. And that is just how the enemy attacks us. We cannot be ignorant of his devices, beloved. We cannot be ignorant of the enemy methods and his tactics. And so in preparation to heal yourself and to heal your emotions, there are tips for healing the emotion. You got to let go of rejection. Remember I said rejection is one of the main demonic spirits. Rejection can have you bound up, hemmed up and to the place where you don't even know who you are. And you begin to view everyone as against you. You begin to look at people, and if they look at you a certain way, you begin to associate that with, oh, they don't like me. Or they don't like me because of my color. Or they don't like me because of my hair. Or they don't like me because of my age. They don't like me. And it's all about, it becomes the don't like me itis. 
you got to let go of rejection. Rejection actually activates the same pathway in your brain as physical pain. You didn't know that. Which is one reason why it hurts so much. When you get a divorce, that's rejection. When someone leaves and walks out of your life, it's hard to recover from that. Yeah, you may be saying on the surface, oh, I'm glad he gone. I'm glad she gone. They made my life a living H-E double hockey stick. But beloved, it's still rejection. Because when you started out that thing, that was not the way you felt. You was in love. You was in it for the love. You was in it for the camaraderie. You was in it because I didn't want to be lonely anymore. You was in it because I, I, my biological clock. Whatever reason you got into that relationship and you are now rejected as a result of that, it's painful. It's painful. And so it hurts so much until we just, sometimes we want to just lay down and die. Or we want to just crawl up in the hole or we begin to drink or smoke or or whatever it is just because we want to numb the pain of rejection. Turn your failure, beloved, into something positive. You have to turn it into something positive. You have to use what we call self-affirmations. When you turn failure into something positive, see, there is destiny killers and spiritual hijackers, and they come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Failure for the believer is not an option. If you are born again, Holy Ghost feel anointed man and woman of God, failure is not an option. But in, what are you saying? What are you saying? Are you saying that I am a child of the Most High God and then turn it around and then you're sabotaging what you just said? Oh, my, uh, my dad and my mother said this. We, 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 like Billy goes, we begin to regurgitate things that you are not. God says you are the apple of my eye. God says you are more than a conqueror. And so we need to say what he says. If he is saying that you're not a failure, if he is saying by your stripes, By his stripes you are healed. If he is saying that I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you hope for future and an expected end, that's what you should be saying. Let's stop saying what the enemy is saying. Because he has no power over your life unless you give it to him. In our emotions, because we... So many people have walked out of our lives. Think along it on these terms, beloved people of God. I hope this will help you. Think along when people walk out of your life, what were were they adding to your life or were they taking from your life? You have to use self-affirmations if you have that what we call, well, the psychology field likes to call self, low self-esteem. The Bible says David encouraged himself. Beloved, encourage yourself. We have to stop looking to other people to meet our needs. No man died for you. Only Jesus died for you. And he was 100% man and God. He is now seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding on your behalf. Emotional pain, beloved, can make it impossible for you to enjoy life. It can manifest itself as a physical disease or pain. You've got to let go of rejection. You've got to let it go. Say, I'll let it go. Tonight, tonight, while it is still called today, I am letting go rejection. 
in Jesus' mighty name. Avoid rumination and learn from your failure. Learn from your failures. Learn that you are more than a conqueror. Learn who you are in Christ. They that know that God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. I'm here to encourage you as children of God, that God loves you, and he does not want to leave you in the state that you are in. Keep guilt from fostering and use self-affirmations. Say, by his stripes I'm healed. Say, I'm more than a conqueror. I am a child of the most high God. I am filled with excellence. I am walking in power and dominion. Tell yourself who you are and stop letting the enemy tell you who you are. Use those self-affirmations to boost your self-esteem. So that you can have greater emotional well-being. Emotional pain, beloved, it often exacts and takes from you the quality of life. Stress and negative emotions associated with trying uh, uh, to e- trying trying to to lead it leads you, in other words, to physical 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 decapitation. Yeah, because if you keep feeding your emotion negative, then parts of your body begin to shut down. It begins to shut down, beloved. When we see our past experience, they have made us the way we are, but we don't have to stay that way. We don't. I would say I refuse to stay that way. Although I have past hurts, although I have past emotional pain, I refuse to stay in that condition in the name of Jesus. I refuse to stay in this place right here. I refuse to accept limitation in the name of Jesus. I refuse to be restricted in my ability to be emotionally sound and healthy in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Beloved, you can heal your life. We, you can heal your life. You can heal your emotions. You have to face the truth. You can't be free while living in denial. You can't pretend that certain negative things didn't happen to you. They did. But what will you do? Moving forward, find someone, an accountability partner, not someone who gossips and wants to tell all of what you tell to them, but confess your faults. The Bible says confess your faults one to another. So what? So that you may be healed. Assume some personal responsibility and accountability. Some people are trapped in denial about how they truly feel. Why? Because they, they have been shamed into thinking that something is wrong with them because their emotions is off balance. You can be healed, beloved. You can be healed and you can be set free and delivered because the power of God It reigns mightily in you. Beloved, emotional pain, it can interfere with every aspect and detail of your life. You begin to think suicide or thoughts. You begin to think nobody is ever going to want me. And maybe that person who said that to me was telling the truth. I just, I'm being realistic now. No, the devil is a liar. You have to heal your personality, beloved. Healing for the personality that has been fragmented begins with what? Acceptance and hope. 
There is hope. If there's hope for a tree, then there's a hope for you. And there's a hope for me. Freedom then comes from dealing with that wounded personality or emotion. That's when freedom comes. That's when deliverance comes. It comes from healing the past, healing our past hurts. Many of us, beloved, have experienced not being loved by a parent, by a spouse, by your children. We have experienced being abandoned. We have been wounded verbally, physically, or sexually as children. And so your personalities have been fragmented. And what it has done is it has etched. A, a, a deep, deep wound causing you so much hurt, so much pain that you, some of us do not even want to live. Beloved, most mental illnesses is caused by imbalances, as I stated earlier, chemicals and structural changes in the brain. Too much or too little of these chemicals in your neurotransmitters can affect your mood. It can affect your thinking. It can affect your behavior. Treatment of such conditions, such as depression, bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia, they often include restoring your chemical balance in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Your emotions, beloved, can cause you pain in your wrists. It could cause you pain in your hips, your knees, your ankles, your bunions, every part of your body. Your emotions can cause, even in your head. It can cause you all types of breakdowns. See, the wrist represents ease and movement. So when you when your wrist does not move easily, then we call it, we like to call it it, carpal tunnel or some disease. But God did not give you carpal tunnel. It's somewhere that your emotions have been overstressed or strained that is now causing you, the manifestation of this in your wrist, your hips having nothing to move forward to, fear. Your hips, the fear of moving forward in big decisions. When, that, when there has been some emotional trauma that it affects your hip and the movement, it can start going down, beloved, and moving into many as, aspects and different parts of your body. Why? Because of your emotions. Emotional pain has great, great, it causes great distress in your body. It causes your body to break down. It causes you to begin to feel overwhelmed. And some things that causes us to have emotional pain is when we have soul tie covenants. Oh, yeah. Soul ties, covenants come from emotionally being dependent upon other people. Soul ties have been formed when two or more people, when they become bonded together in the realm of the soul. The mind, the will, and the ability to make choices and the emotions Yeah, that's how we form soul ties. It's like the knitting together of two souls. And so when this occurs, whether it's in a godly relationship, well, of course, blessings will result when it's in a godly relationship. But when it occurs between an ungodly connection, then that person 
has other motives. They have the wrong motive. They are the wrong people. It causes confusion and destruction, which results in your separation from God. See, when you have a godly soul tie, beloved, and this is because of the emotional connection, it needs to be a positive one-on-one. And it's usually done in the bounds and the realms of marriage. In relationships with mothers and daughters or mothers and sons or husbands and wives, it's for love. Godly soul ties is for love. It's for security. It's for health and it's for your growth. But if the motive of even one of those persons is impure, beloved, and emotional dependency can occur, which causes emotional pollution. It causes emotional deception. And then those two people end up with ungodly motives. And so what do you have? You've created bondage, which results in confusion. God is not the author of confusion. Then what is created is control and manipulation. And manipulation has to do with witchcraft. And so when these health unhealthy relationships begin to hinder the person's relationship with God and with others who come into their sphere of influence, then the, the root of it is sin. And it becomes or it forms into idolatry. I'm trying to help you understand what your emotions can do to you. Physically, spiritually, and emotionally. See, we should depend on no one else. We shouldn't be lifting anyone else, even if it's in. We, we, we so, we, we're so used to, in the church move, we lift people up in places where God should be. Many times people are unaware that they are being drawn into an unhealthy emotional dependency. And so they are made vulnerable because why? Because of the wounds. Emotional pain hurts. It, once again, it creates a wound, a wound that only the healing power of God that can heal that wound. We see an example of a godly soul time, which was, of course, between Jonathan and David. They were knit together in a godly soul, soul time. And so they encouraged one another in the Lord. No, they were not never in a sexual union. And there are some religions that teach that. Jacob and Joseph, they're another example of godly soul time between a parent and a child. And so when you have negative soul ties, then it comes from sitting under teachings that will, that will cause you to have a totally different view of the God that you serve. Negative soul ties occur under false teaching, whether it's cult involvement, legalistic, Churches, they give examples. There's an example using the Jehovah Witness as a form of legalistic or cult soul tie or false teaching. See, the soul, when it is bound to an organization, it is a soul tie that brings confusion. And once again, God is not the author of confusion. The different gospel there's different gospel that was once characterized by a list of do's and don'ts is not what we do as believers. Because who the son says free is free indeed. So where a soul tie has occurred, witchcraft is involved. Yes, you open doors for witchcraft. Witchcraft is defined as getting other people to do what you want them to do through the use of what? Domination, intimidation, manipulation. And so 
this will conclude. This thing is so packed and so powerful. I pray in the name of Jesus that God has imparted some spiritual truths to you and you have takeaway revelation as to what your emotions can, what doors it can open, how it can affect you mentally, physically, and spiritually. And may God protect your emotions, beloved, and bring you to a a place of healing inside to the outside. That is his plan for his children. And may you be blessed, and may God continue to unfold and release to you and meet you at your point of need. This concludes my teaching, and I pray that each and every one of you on this call has received what you came to receive here tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Woman of God, let, woman of God, let me say something. That was that was that was fire, and I don't I don't believe God is finished. I really don't. I believe that. The Holy Spirit has set this up, has staged this up for a deliverance right over this phone line. Because I believe that, I know I, I am free. <laughs> I'm talking about myself. I am free. I, I, I am getting up now. I, I am free from shame. So if I'm free, I know, I know we are free. I know we are getting up. I know we are free from shame. I know, I know we have been set free tonight. So, woman of God, I, I, admi- I admonish you to lead us in prayer, a deliverance prayer. I, I, I dare to pull on you in the spirit realm because I believe somebody over this phone right now, over this phone line right now, is set up for a deliverance right here, in the name of right Jesus. now, at this moment. So, woman of God, I, I admonish you in the spirit realm to pull down strongholds in Jesus' name. Yes, Father, God. in the mighty name of Who Jesus, uh, Father, oh, we God. break and cut yes, and counsel and burn the power of any Holy spells, uh, anchoring, Shut programming, uh, mind control, of anything that is triggering uh, our uh, emotions to be out of control in the yes, name of God. Jesus. We cut and sever Shut mental up. pain, uh, mental Shut anguish, up. confusion. Uh, we break Lord. the power Shut and the band of wickedness and the squid and octopus spirit of mind Shut control up. that have Lord. tentacles, tentacles of confusion, tentacles of migraine head. In the name of Jesus, we sever tentacles of the squid spirit uh, that wraps itself around our mind, our will, and our emotion. We remove the blinders. We destroy all the effects of the enemy in the name of Jesus. We cancel. We expose all deception, rejection. We cut it off in the name of Jesus. Anything that is dead and lying dormant uh, at the end uh, of our miracle. In the name of Jesus, as a result of this teaching, break your hold in the name of Jesus. Break your hold in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we come against mental anguish, shame, in the name of Jesus, and anything that will cause our emotions to be imbalanced, uh, in the name of Jesus, or to send out fire messages uh, that will cause or interrupt our life, our calling, and destiny. We overrule every hijack of the enemy, in the name of Jesus, uh, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that our hearts, our minds, our will, and our emotion is healed in the name of Jesus. Our bodies is healed in the name of Jesus. Our conscious and subconscious and unconscious mind, will, and emotion and intellect is healed in the name of Jesus. Father, we call ourselves back uh, into divine alignment in the name of Jesus. We take authority and we break the the hold of the Leviathan and the squid that has wrapped itself around our mind, our will, and our emotion in the name of Jesus. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let deliverance, oh God, come, oh God. Let yes, healing. God. It is the children's bread. Oh, no more glory. shame. We walk My out God. of shame in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, we yes, walk yes, out of yes, shame yes, in the name of Jesus. Glory. We walk out of shame in the mighty name yes, God, of Jesus. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, we God. thank you, Holy Spirit. We, we thank, thank you, Holy Spirit, Spirit of the living God. Yes, God. Fill each one of us up, Lord God. Fill and us, God. use Fill us. us for your glory us, in the mighty Fill name us, of Jesus. We thank you for Jesus. healing our emotions, oh God. Yes, we God. thank you, Lord God, uh, for bringing divine peace and order glory in God. every area of our lives in the name I of Jesus. Stop. We strip glory off God. ourselves. Strip. We strip, strip. off strip. Of ourselves strip. feelings strip. of hurt. Strip. Yes, feelings God. of hurt. In the name yes. of Jesus, feeling of criticizing, feeling yes. of resentment, feelings of unlove. In the name of Jesus, Blow we it strip out. it off. In the name yes. of Jesus, we Blow strip off off resentment yes. and bitterness breathe and anger in, and self-hatred. We strip it off, we strip it off, we strip it off, we strip it off, we strip it off in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. Yes, God, we thank you, Father. We sever every soul tie covenant Yes, God. in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God. We thank you that our mind, our will, and our emotions are healed. Healed by the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.